I made the point at the beginning of the program that I don't think that it's sensible to be talking about building a bike lane to the airport. Now, if you are a worker at the airport uh, and you need to get there, riding a bike may be an option. And indeed, we've had several callers tonight saying there's already a perfectly good bike lane in and around the airport that you can use. And I've had some of my audience tell me that that's exactly what they do. But surely no one's suggesting you ride a bike to the airport to catch a plane, are they? I mean, that would be, I would suggest, totally impractical. Now, we have a perfectly good train system, so anybody can get on a, a commuter train in Sydney from wherever you live, go to Central, get on the airport line with your bike, go to the airport, and presumably there's someone there, somewhere there where you can store it and you catch a plane. Or you can pack it up or, and take it on a plane. As one of our emailers, David, has just told me, G'day, Steve, bikes have to be packed properly to go on a plane. No one could ride there with the intention of taking their bike on a plane. And that's indeed when you see people with those bike packs. This is the broader debate, though, about the interaction between cars and bikes in Sydney. Now, it's, it's a debate largely confined to inner Sydney. And it seems to me that there's a whole lot of people who live and work in inner Sydney, and by that I mean the inner west, uh, the inner eastern suburbs, the very much lower north shore, uh, who want to commute on bikes. And in fact, out the window of the studio where I'm sitting, there is one of Lord Mayor Clovermore's bike lanes that goes up and over the Anzac Bridge. And it seems to be populated by a lot of people who use it. But it's taking away car spaces. It's taking away road width particularly with those crazy bike lanes that have concrete gutters down the middle of them and they take out an entire lane. Apparently we're going to build a new one in Castle Race Street. Uh, there's bike lanes in places like York and Clarence where I rarely see bikes. So how do we get to the point where enough is too much? I think the bike lobby have captured local government far too easily and particularly Clovermore, our Lord Mayor. She cops the blame but it's the entire Sydney Council really. Sophie Bartho is the Communications Director for Bicycle New South Wales, is uh, being good enough to join us online. Sophie, thanks for your time. Good. Hi, Steve. I must say, front, straight up, I like bikes. Uh, I will go home tonight <laughs> and sit down and, and fall asleep again in front of two hours of the Giro d'Italia. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I use a bike to exercise on. I don't commute on a bike because it's impractical. But surely we have got to the point, have we not, where your lobbying has been so effective that you're basically taking over the streets. Well, no, we have got a long way to go because, I mean, 75% of Sydney siders, and, and this is not a CBD, City of Sydney-centric thing, 75% of people would ride a bike if they felt safe. And safety is connected to separated cycleways. And as I said, it, it is not a Sydney-centric thing. Um, we see the growth and the appetite all over New South Wales and Australia. And it's not just about transport. This is also connected to our really disappointing you know, health metrics. We need to get moving. Australia um, and you know, our residents, our workforce, we need to get moving. No one will argue that. No one will argue that at all. But the, the, the more um, divisive debate centres around our major cities, and we're in Sydney, so let's concentrate on Sydney. Yep. You, you quote figures that I, I quite, uh, quite clearly I find staggering that, that you could quote them and believe them. <laughs> I mean, a, you're talking about uh, you've done a regional bike neck. Uh, you're talking about a regional bike network. You've done a survey of 15 council areas. Uh, and you say that uh, you could produce a 71% increase in bike trips by 2026 with an estimated value of reduced congestion of 97.8 million. I mean, they're just figures plucked out of the air. Well, no, they're not. And, um, you know, these are done by, you know, international consultancy, ACOM. So this is not um, uh, Bicycle New South Wales, um, you know, plucking figures out of the air. This is incredibly... Um, rigorous data and a lot of credible sources, you know, including the statistics of growth in, in cycling um, that the City of Sydney, um, they themselves measure twice a year. So there is no shortage of evidence of the benefits 
on multiple levels to the city of Sydney and the people of Sydney. And, you know, we, we're all experiencing it, the, the frustration of sitting in traffic that is simply not moving. But you, you, quote, need... you quote things such as, uh, bike riding in the city soared 132% over four years, bike trips in the CBD have doubled, streets with separated cycleways have been the biggest growth. 408% increase on Burke Street, 327% on Kent Street, 307% on College Street. This is all inner Sydney stuff. I mean, how do you think the people of, of Penrith and St Mary's and Parramatta and you know, think well, th they, they just look at that and go, well, all that means is I can't drive my car down a road I used to drive my car down. No, it actually, the, the, the thing that is really important here, this is actually about freeing up the roads so that they are more accessible and there is more movement. Roads, we need our roads for the movement of freight. And I think that's what's been interesting in this debate around the airports and, you know, some of Minister Gay's comments, that we do need to shift people's modes of transport. And there is enormous potential still to be realised. And, you know, the city of Parramatta, they too are seeing the benefits, are, are investing in active transport and they too are seeing the growth. So these statistics we quoted in today's media release were focused around the city of Sydney because we need to get moving on the Sydney city centre access strategy. Sophie, inner city trendy, sitting around coffee shops, patting each other on the back that they've got Clovermore to build them a bike lane. We have members who ride from the northern beaches into the city. We have a member who rides from Borkham Hill yeah, into the city. Yeah, he's training so for a people. triathlon. No, they're regular daily commuters. Now, they are fairly, um, uh, you know, heavy-duty commuters. Heavy-duty? <laughs> but it's interesting. There is the, the growth will continue because it is a fantastic way to travel and we are simply catching up with the rest of the world. What about this crazy idea of a bike track to the airport? Far from crazy. And as you mentioned in your introduction, with 20,000 workers... No, but plane catching. Surely, as a, as a flyer, someone who's catching a plane, you're not going to ride a bike to the airport, are you? Look, that is, a, that is an opportunity, but our... What's that mean? And with what do you mean it's an opportunity? There are a lot of what we would call walk-up domestic passengers, and that is only going to increase. So there is the potential for that. And Sydney, look at Sydney Airport's location. Where it's 14 kilometres from the CBD. So have you ever so, ridden your bike to the airport to catch a plane? No, I haven't, but I would love to. No, and you I wouldn't. Would. No, you wouldn't. Well, I mean, you're going to be all sweaty and sitting on the plane thinking, oh, I can't have a shower. No, 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 no. No, there's so much potential there, and especially with the introduction of e-bikes. But I think we need e to come back They're not to... real bikes. Oh, they're fantastic. We'll have to get you That's on one. That's cheating, so. No, 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 no. I, they're, um, you certainly still need to pedal, but they certainly <laughs> take the, the effort out of the hill. Listen. But let's, keep the, let's keep this in perspective. The opportunity in terms of Sydney Airport is we need to look at its geographic location, yeah. and it is you know, well located to the Sydney CBD, but the access point, you know, up the Cooks River to Parramatta and further west um, in terms of the connection to the south. So it's really important that that is connected with the other existing cycleways. But most importantly, you know, 28,000 workers, and that is only going to grow, and goodness knows we need to improve the level of service of Sydney Airport. I mean, it's a really disappointing catch the train, entry so point. Catch the train. Well, the, the I train... I see people on the train with bikes all the time. Yep, the train is a fantastic addition to the transport mix, but it, it doesn't need to stop there. And keep in mind, we need to um, very, very seriously commit to active transport for the workforce. Well, we're going to keep talking about this because I think uh, I, talking about it helps. I don't yep. think we need, we don't need conflict. We need to talk about what's sensible and what's not sensible. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Sophie. And I think the All other right. thing is we need to experience it. All right. Good on you. Thanks a lot.